Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at the Death Knight Talents, Artifact Points and Stat Priorities. Let's get started with the Death Knight Talents. Remember guys, these are talents for raiding and Evil Nightmare. They're not necessarily the talents I would pick inside um, dungeons, although for the most part on Death Knight at least they are the same. So we start on the first row guys, we go with Heart Brute Strike, generates 3 additional runic power per target hit. Really when you're playing Death Knight guys, especially in raids, then again in dungeons as well, it's really all about those death strikes. That's the easiest way of putting it guys. So when you get 3 additional runic power off Heart Strike, this is, uh, this is great. Rapid Decomposition is next. Your Death and Decay deals 50% more often, damage more often. And while on your Death and Decay, you generate 15% more runic power. Again guys, another talent choice that's going to generate you more runic power, which lets you use more death strikes. We then go down to the third line and we take the Osure. Osure. While you have at least 5 bone shield charges, the cost of death strike is reduced by 5 runic power. Additionally, your maximum runic power is increased by 10. The increase of the runic power there, the increase by 10 is not huge, but the first part of this talent is big, guys. Basically, this this actually defines your playstyle a lot, because basically when you're playing a death knight, you want to maintain that uh, that 5 bone shield charges at minimum active. You might have 5, 6, 7 charges act alive, just so that you can get that 5 runic power reduction on death strike. So you basically, you've got here generating runic power increased, generating run runic power increased, and this reduces the cost of death strike so all three of these talents are lining you up to do more death strikes guys which is which is great as a as a blood decay tank obviously that's your main survivability tool the fourth line you have a choice between mark of blood red thirst and tombstone red thirst is is very strong they've actually nerfed it recently in a in a patch but it's still extremely powerful guys spending runic power will decrease the remaining cool item from blood by two seconds per ten runic power you'll be surprised how fast you can get Vampiric Blood back up with this talent. You, especially with these ta these first talents, like I said guys, where you're spamming Death Strike as much as possible. You're obviously using a lot of Runic Power and your Vampiric Blood is coming off cooldown very, very fast. Which is, which is obviously great as a tank. When it comes to raiding, you don't necessarily need the Mass Grip on most fights guys. Which means you will be picking March of the Damned just for the longer movement speed buff. Although obviously in dungeons and stuff you will pick Titan Grasp most of the time and in certain fights you will also pick Titan Grasp. This line is this line is also quite an easy choice. Will Nec Necropolis is not a great talent. Then you're left with Foul Bulwark and Ruin Tap. Foul Bulwark is Foul, Foul Bulwark is the go-to talent here, guys. Each charge of bone shield increases your maximum health by 2%. And if you go back to, for example, the Osari talent, Os I, I need to learn, learn how to pronounce this word, guys. Osuari. Basically, you're always going to have at least five bone shield charges active because you want to, you know, maximize those death strikes. So that's straight off 10% increase your maximum health. Most of the time, you have between five, seven. Let's say if you're, if you're maximizing, so between 10, 14% increased health through foul bulwark, guys. Of course, you want to keep bone shield up anyway because it's obviously your main defensive, reducing damage taken by 16%. Um, so foul bulwark just works extremely well. It's a very great. It's a very good talent. It's passive as well. You don't need to think about it. If you wanted to take Ruin Tap, this is very, very situational, guys. It also costs a Ruin to use. So in only last three seconds, reduces the damage taken by 25%. So basically, you need to sacrifice that 10 to 14% extra, extra health and use a Ruin if you want to use Ruin Tap. So there's only maybe certain fights, again, where you might want to use this. It depends, really, obviously, on the damage taken in Mythic. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see. I'm just thinking maybe, like, for example, Ursoc at the Roar, you might want to use Ruin Tap, for example, because it's, it's something that only lasts three seconds. So it's really a spell that you would use for big boss um, boss spells, if you know what I mean, like a breath or or a roar from Ursoc. So most of the time you're going to go full foul bulwark. It's it's almost it's almost not even a choice. When it comes to progress rating, obviously Purgatory is the the obvious choice in this line. Like it's it's almost a no question again. It's almost a no brainer, guys. Purgatory very strong talent, especially when progressing as a tank. When you're doing dungeons, Bone Storm is is strong. For sure it's stronger than more mobs you're, you're attacking so when you're doing big trash packs and stuff it's also good dps so but it does cause runic power so you are reducing your survivability taking bone storm from what for the most part even though it does heal you but yeah purgatory is just an obvious choice for raiding guys so this is what the talent tree looks like for a blood death knight i honestly feel as if there's very little room for changing any of these talents and for the most part there i think i find that death knight talent tree is one of the easiest um one of the most no brain, I guess you could say, for raiding. So, there it is, guys. So, if we go over to the artifact weapon, 
the artifact weapon talent tree. So again, guys, if, we, if I tell you that you have about 20 artifact points before you get into Animal Nightmare, it takes you about three weeks to get 20 artifact points, apparently, according to what's been theory crafted so far. So if we start spending the points, the first thing we need to work out, think to ourselves, guys, is which of the golden talents do we want to work our way towards first? And we're actually going to choose Unending Thirst. While Blood Shield is active, you gain 25% leech and damage dealt by Death Strike is increased by 25%. Now this is great because it means more healing obviously through the leech, uh, it means that your death strike is, is increased by 25% which means bigger shield. And interestingly guys, what's great about this talent as well is that when you're raiding, as the off tank, when, you're when your blood shield is not actually being broken from damage because you're off tanking, it basically means that you are continually, like constantly doing an increased 25% damage through your death strike. So it's, uh, it's quite a big damage increase as an off tank. So it's quite a big damage increase in general when you're tanking for most fights in M of Nightmare. So Unending Thirst is, a, is definitely a good pickup. So if we work our way towards, towards that right now, we're going to do, yeah, we've got to pick that one. Vampiric Fangs. This is again great. Increase your maximum health by 5% and increased, increases all healing received by an additional 5%. Like I said, guys, you're going to have really high uptime on the um, Vampiric Blood. So this is a cool talent. This, this is great as well. Rattling Bones, Marrow Rent has a 30% chance to generate an additional charge of Bone Shield. So instead of three, you get four. This is, this is obviously great, guys. I mean, Bone Shield, like I said previously, you want to keep up stacks between five, you know, five, six, seven, um, if you're playing optimally. And obviously, if you get an extra Bone Shield, it's, it's great. It's great talent. Take it. Bone Breaker. Increases damage done by Marowind, okay, largely uninteresting, but you know, it's a, it's a, you, you take it anyway because you've got to take the path. And finally, because we're working down towards Unending Thirst, we're taking the All Consuming Rot, we unlocked it, boom. Now, the second line of talents, guys, we're going to work towards Umbilicus Eternus. After Vampiric Blood expires, you absorb damage equal to five times the damage the blood plague dealt during vampiric blood so again this is talking about vampiric blood guys again an ability i told you guys that you will have a lot of uptime um on inside raids because of the amount of runic power you're spending on death strike so we're gonna work our way towards that so the bonus armor although wait guys there is actually one talent you want to pick up before you continue towards that so you're this the 16th point you spend guys you definitely want to pick up mouth of hell Mouth of Hell, I'm actually kind of surprised a little bit that Mouth of Hell itself is not a golden talent, guys. It's, I think it's that good, um, especially DPS-wise, that's for sure. So basically, Dancing Rune Weapon summons a second copy of Mother Damned. While Dancing Rune Weapon is active, your Mara Rend will generate additional charge of Bone Shield. So take the Mouth of Hell, guys. I mean, with Mouth of Hell, you're basically getting 10 Mara Rend every single time you use Sorry, 10 Bone Shield every single time you use Mara So it's also a big DPS increase, guys, because you have two Runic weapons. So once we pick them out of hell, guys, we go back down, we take the Vein Render, and then we unlock the Umbilicus Eternus. That's your 20 points spent right now. So this is what you'd have when you go into the Emerald Nightmare. Now, where do we go from here? Well, from here, we are going to unlock the Skeletal Shattering. It's a choice between do you want to increase your Pyre Chance by 3% or do you want to increase your damage done by Blood Plague? Let's take the parry chance. Again, like I said, we're focused on raiding here, guys. Single target most of the time, for at least on bosses. Well, and then we take Skeletal Shattering. Now, this is an interesting ability. Each time Bone Shield absorbs damage, it has a chance equal to your Critical Strike to absorb an additional 8% damage. So basically, what that means is Bone Shield, by default, um, soaks 16% damage, guys. This will obviously bring it up to 24% based on the same chance as your Critical Strike which obviously that's to do with stat priorities, which we'll come to later, guys. So we've unlocked this. Now, the next thing we want to do is, as soon as you unlock the third gold talent, you want to unlock the Dance of Darkness, increase the duration of Dancing Rune, Rune Weapon by two seconds. This obviously works extremely well with Mouth of Hell because your weapons, both your weapons are going to be active for another six seconds. So this is actually quite a big DPS increase, as well as giving you that extended parry chance, guys, for six seconds. So I'm a big fan of this talent. Um, now we've left with a choice. We've spent 27 points. We have three talents left. Meat Shield, we have Heart Strike, and we have uh, Increased Damage from Blood Plague. Heart Strike, right, we're going to go with the Stamina first. We're going to go with Blood Plague second, and we're going to go heart, with Heart Strike last. Heart Strike, single target on bosses, guys. Although the talent initially reads quite quite well, Heart Strike kills you for 25% damage deals. 
I don't really I don't really rate this talent that highly. I don't think the healing it's gonna do is particularly high. Uh, you can you can obviously go and test on dummies yourself as to how much damage Heart Strike does single target. It's uh, it's not really gonna uh, make or break you, let's put it that way. So that's just got the 34 artifact traits put in guys. We are now gonna look at the stat priorities. So stat priorities for a blood decay. As with every tank guys, we have haste as number one. Ruin regeneration. Um, your abilities are obviously then gonna come off cooldown faster as a result, like blood boil is uh, the obvious one that, that comes to mind. But more increased speed on rune regeneration, guys, obviously indirectly means more runic power, which indirectly means more survivability. So you could basically say, yeah, more survivability, more survive. Even though these, they don't, even though, yeah, rune regeneration, increased rune regeneration is also going to let you keep up the bone shield, obviously, a lot easier. So this should be clearer, more abilities. In general, guys, haste is just so good for all the tanks out there because it just increases survivability so much so it's, it's an obvious first pick now the second pick the second talent guys or should i say stat we're going to go for is critical strike now why critical strike well critical strike for death knight is pretty strong because it increases your parry just like warrior but as we just discussed it also interacts with skeletal shattering guys so each time bone shield absorb damage is a chance equal to your critical strike to absorb an additional eight percent of damage so obviously the higher your crit is the more chance you have a skeletal shattering coming into play so that alone is pretty strong so we've got skeletal shattering artifact ability there artifact ability and finally you've got to remember as well that as a result of more crit as a death knight and you're having leech especially if you look at for example landing thrust that's also increasing your leech you're actually, as a result, going to get more healing, more healing um, through crit. So that leaves us with the third stat priority. And to be honest, on this line, guys, it really is. It could be either mastery or versatility. Um, personally, I don't really have a strong preference either way. So I'm put, just going to put them on the same line here. But yeah, that rounds up the, the Blood Death Knight, guys. As always, I am definitely interested in hearing your feedback. If you disagree or agree with the, the choices that have been made for, for rating Blood Death Knight, then of course, let me know. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys either on stream or in the next video. Thanks for watching.